Welcome back to Pre-Calc. Today we're going to be talking about composition of functions again, but we're going to be talking about them and their domain and range. So by this point you've already read the section. If you haven't, stop and read the section again. And then let's continue on to domain and range of composition of functions. So this is a mapping diagram, and it just shows us how we get something, well, some element A. If it's in the domain of F, we apply F. So that's f of a. Suppose it gives us some b. Well, this circle, this oval, rather the green one, that's the range of f, because we applied f up here. And then, what we're going to do then is we know with composition of functions, this goes over to here and becomes c, because it's g of b. And this is what we've been seeing for a while. Something goes from a over here, and then it goes from here to there. Now, what we're going to check out today is a restricted domain. Now, this is what's happening here. I can have some element A go over here to the range. But unless this element is actually in the domain of G, I can't do anything with it. We can't complete our composite function. It just doesn't work. So here, this means A not in domain of G of F of A, or G of F of X. We need a very specific idea here. We would need something that goes from here into the domain, and then from the domain over here. Uh, let's call this x for the heck of it. x turns into y, y turns into z. Because we can go from x to y to z, that would mean that this is in our domain. So, is in domain of the composite function. But if you can't complete the entire composite function, no matter where it breaks down, that means that that is not in our composite function. This might have all seemed really, really weird. Let's take a real world example, or at least a textbook example. I want to pause and write these in. By the way, this is number three in the problem set, so if you can't see it, take out your textbook and zoom in there. So we got the graphs. We want to plot these on your graph for making sure that they agree with the figure. They do agree with the figure, because I plotted them before I did this one. Now, we want to also plot the graphs of y equals f of g of x and y equals g of f of x. Now, we're going to do that on Desmos right now. So here, we're going to show how to find the composition. I've typed already into Desmos my f of x, including the restricted domain, and my g of x, including the restricted domain. f is the red one. g is the blue one. So if I want to type in f of g of x, what's down here, I'm good to go. And you'll notice that it looks very similar to the red function, just shifted over. Same thing with g of f of x. It looks very similar to the red function, just shifted up. That's perfectly fine. Now we can use these to answer some of the questions. So if you want, you can use these, or you can just use the original ones and do the two-part process which we covered for how to evaluate a composition function using a graph last time. All right, so we did the one on Desmos. Now, we want to find this f of g of 3. We want to show in your sketch from part A the two steps that you can do to find this. So our sketch, we can even just use this one. For g of 3, I go 1, 2, 3 up to here, and that's about 5. Well then that means I take my 5, and I go over to here, and up to here. That looks like it's about 3. And I found my two steps. So that means f of g, f of 3, equals about 3. Now, this next one, this is what we were talking about with the restricted domain, part C. Explain why f of g of 6 is undefined. 
Well, let's go take a look at our sketch. If I go out to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then go up, I don't hit F. Because I don't hit F, I can't apply the function F to the composite function. So, 6, not in domain of G. That explains why f of g of 6 is undefined. We can't throw something through that composite function because it doesn't satisfy both functions. Now, let's take a look at why f of g of 1 is undefined. Well, I can take a look up here. I can find g of 1. g of 1 is just 3. But if I go to 3 and then go up, it doesn't hit f. So because of that, I can say that g of 1 equals 3, but 3 is not in the domain of f. Because of that, the composite function is undefined. Part of it is not true, so therefore the whole thing is not true. So we want to find in this part, part d, an equation for f of g of x, and we want to simplify. Well, g of x here is x plus 2. f of x, I'm going to do it up here and just drag it down, x plus 2. I'm going to plug that in for x in f of x. So you know what? f of x is 9 minus x. Cool. And we can just simplify that a little bit. 9 minus x minus 2. So let's throw it together and say 7 minus x. So that is our equation. This is part D. 7 minus x equals f of g of x. And we've simplified. We're good to go. So now we're going to do part E. We want to find the domain of f of g of x. And to do that, we're going to take g of x. We're going to plug it in the domain of f. That's this one up here. So instead of x in between 4 and 8, I'm going to put x plus 2. So I'm going to have 4 less than x plus 2 less than 8, and it's important to have the underline, but the underline really isn't working. Then we just subtract 2 from both sides, so I'm going to have 2 less than x less than 6. And that's my domain for f of g of x. Now, for the domain of g of f of x, I do the same thing, so I'm going to take f and put that in the domain of g. f is going to replace this x. So I'm going to have one less than x less than five, except I need to replace f, and f is nine minus x. So here I'm going to do nine minus x instead of just x. Well, then I just need to go ahead and solve it out. So I'm going to subtract 9 on both sides. Negative 8, less than negative x, less than negative 3. Then I'm going to divide by a negative, and that is going to flip everything. So I'm going to have 8 greater than x greater than 3. And if you want, you could also rewrite it 3 less than x less than 8. It's your call. Whichever one, they're the same thing mathematically. Now, do they agree with the graphs in part A? They do. We're good to go. I'm a bit confused what f is asking, considering it's the exact same thing, so we're going to skip it. We're going to find f of f of 5. So f of f of 5, let's do it up here. Well, f of 5 is going to be 4, f of 4 is going to be 5. So f of f of 5 is equal to 4. Now, it's totally okay that we have the same function in both sides of our composition. It happens. Now, let's see if we can do the same thing with g of g of 5. If I go up here, over to 5, 
g of 5 is 7. The issue is, if I try to plug that 7 in again, it goes outside of the domain of g. So, if I wanted to explain why g of g of 5, g of 5 is undefined, I would say g of 5 equals 7, and 7 is not in domain of g. Domain. Darn typos. Another typo. All right, we did that one. Good to go. So you've seen an example. We've walked through it. We've shown how to do all parts of it. Now it's your turn. You have two problems from the textbook that you're going to do, and then you're going to submit them. After that, you just have a reading summary and a lesson summary, and you're good to go. Have at it, folks. And remember, if you have any questions, see me during office hours, and I will gladly help you out.